afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Columbus Metropolitan Club, founded in 1976 by 13 visionary women leaders. CMC's mission is to connect people and ideas through community conversation. To carry out our mission, CMC explores public policy issues, current events, and lessons in leadership at forums like this one every week. From the beginning, CMC has welcomed everyone. I'm Deb Hackathorn, Principal with Civic Point Government Relations. As you've just heard, I'm also proud to serve as Chair of the CMC Board of Trustees. I'm really pleased that you're here with us today, or watching from home. A new era for Columbus Art Museums is our topic for the day. It's also our fourth uh, event at our new venue. So for those of you that are joining by live stream, we are coming to you today from this beautiful new home in At Columbus's Italian Village. This is called the Ellis, and we welcome all of you to come visit us here live when you have the opportunity. We want to thank tonight's sponsors, the Greater Columbus Arts Council, Benefactor Group, and Cover My Meds. And thank you to our host, again, the Ellis, for their generous support. We're also grateful to the Center for Human Kindness at the Columbus Foundation and the Columbus Dispatch for presenting our live stream, which is being carried on all of our social media platforms. Please thank everyone who is supporting tonight's forum. And on to the forum. The Columbus Museum of Art and the Wexner Center for the Arts are two giants on the Columbus art scene, as you know, and both have new leaders at the helm. Gaetan Verna is the Wexner Center's new executive director, taking over the institution's leadership last November. Born in the Republic of Congo and a Quebecer since age two, she's the, the person, she is the person of color to lead the Wex, the first person of color to lead the Wex. Over on Broad Street, the 145-year-old Columbus Museum of Art welcomed its new leader, Brooke Minto, in May. Born in New York to Jamaican parents, Minto has worked in, to inspire people to engage with the arts in New Orleans, New York City, Miami, and Cape Town. She's also the first person of color to lead CMA. We are so excited to meet these two new dynamic leaders for a conversation spotlighting what's new and next at the Columbus Museum of Art, the WEX, and in the Columbus arts community in general. Please welcome today's esteemed speakers, Brooke Minto, Executive Director and CEO of the Columbus Museum of Art, Gaetan Verna, Executive Director of the Wexner Center for the Arts, and our host today, Erica Thompson, Features Editor for the Columbus Dispatch. Again, you can read more about today's panelists by scanning the QR code on that screen, I hope, at some point. Erica, we look forward to today's conversation. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, Brooke and Gaetan, it's so wonderful to have you in Columbus now. I'm looking forward to our discussion. Uh, I'd like to start with your relationship with art. So what was the turning point in your life when you decided, okay, this is going to be my career? Okay, I'll start. Hi. Thank you for having us. It's actually a really a delight to be here and um, glad to be doing this. Um, after many conversations in preparation, this is really kind of a fun opportunity. Um, for me, I think the turning point was probably as I was um, entering secondary education, uh, visiting colleges and thinking about you know, my future and how you know, university would fit into that potential professional path. And you, know, you go on college tours and people tell you, study what you love, you know, just pursue your passion and, you know, think critically and, and you can do what you want with it. And so that was probably the moment that I knew I would study art history and sort of figure out later what, what career would come from it. But I think that was the moment of real decision that, you know, this is something that I wanted to really master and have a kind of expertise in. Gaetan. Can you hear me? Hello. Oh, sorry. So thank you all for joining us this afternoon. It means a lot to be able to meet you and to speak. So to answer your question, so I come from a family of six. Um, my parents met in Haiti, because they're both Haitian, and they met in a choir. So arts was always something, everybody played an instrument, everybody did ballet, even my brother, who now 
dances and teaches dance also as well. So everybody's a filmmaker, everybody's an artist, everybody's doing something in the arts. But for me early on, um, as I played the cello, danced classical ballet, did theater, I early on knew that I was interested. I knew how difficult the work of an artist is, uh, but I also knew that I would never be the artist. So hence, I always saw myself as somebody who could be the bridge between the artists and audiences. And so for me, uh, from the onset, always loved art, but knew that I would never be the artist, but was always interested in the administration and thinking of that artists need a group of people who are championing the arts, who can make those hard decisions in order to leverage their place in society. So. That was just, this was the only field that I was ever interested in working in. Yeah. I actually once did a, ooh. I once did a studio visit with an artist who said the same, um, when you're called to do this, you can't do anything but it, mm. right? It chooses you more than you choosing it. There's nothing else you could imagine doing. And I think that's probably yeah. true for a lot of us. I love that. It's nice to hear that so often you hear folks who want to be in the spotlight. <laughs> so it's nice, to, it's nice to hear that that occurred to you. No. <laughs> it's just a byproduct, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so as new leaders at these Columbus Arts Institutions, you have the benefit of taking a fresh perspective of the Columbus art scene. I'm almost jealous of you. <laughs> um, so let's start with your institutions, though. Um, the WEX, the museum. What are your museums doing really well right now? I would say that the, what the WEX is doing really well is that it's always commissioned art from artists because we're non-collecting, so we don't have a collection as opposed to the CMA. And so as an institution, enabling artists to create new works of art has always been at the center of the institution. I would also say that the center, if you look, this morning a friend of mine who lives in Berlin sent me a clip of um, Louise Bourgeois, very famous American artist, and at the bottom it said, footage from the WEX. I don't even know when, but that shows you that the WEX has always done really well um, as presenting the most important uh, international artists and bringing them here in Columbus. And I would say also one of the things that the WEX does really well is our um, learning and public practice department, which reaches every week they send me everything they do, and I'm dumbfounded by what they do at the university, what they do off-site. They have programs with vets. They do all this work with for art and resilience, which is work that goes, you know, it's, it's, it's silent, it's one-on-one, -on -one, it's not a big fanfare, it's about wellness. And I think these are the, you know, the two extremes of what the WEX does really well is, is really uh, supporting artists and being in, in community, but sometimes in communities that people don't know that the WEX is there. Okay, we'll get into community a little later. <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, what about you? Oh, I, should we both answer both questions? Yes, yes, please. Would you repeat the question? <laughs> sure. <laughs> what, is the Colum what is the Columbus Museum of Art doing really well right now? Well, something I thought of actually as you were talking, I think we both benefit from institutions that have had formidable leadership for decades um, and that have built not only wonderful institutions with great history, but also communities of support, um, whether that's members, uh, just general audience and museum goers, but also uh, leadership and philanthropists who support these institutions. And I think that's key to all of the success that we can achieve. Um, I do think that my predecessors at CMA were champions of learning, uh, and, and it's something we have for many years been well recognized for. Um, CMA's programs have always really centered creativity and the importance of creativity in early learners and the connection between creativity and innovation. So I think that's something we're known for. It's really at the heart of the museum. Our 1931 building is the Center for Creativity. Um, and so when I was learning about the museum and first getting to know our team, and uh, it was really wonderful to hear about not only the support that that program has gotten, but also the recognition for the work um, nationally, internationally. In addition to that, we do have a collection which is really special, and it's something that we are able to expand because the museum has 
you know, really generous endowments that have been built over the years for us to be able to expand that collection. And I think going forward, you know, as we think about what's next for the collection and, you know, where do we need to fill in the gaps of art history or where do we want to put emphasis on, you know, the work of living mid-career emerging artists, thinking about the fullness of Central Ohio, what the demographic of our population is, how it's changing and how it's evolving is something that will really help us sort of guide the, the next acquisition so that when the public comes in, when members come to the museum, they see themselves reflected in the collection on an ongoing basis. One thing I forgot to say is that the other thing the WEX does that uh, people often for forget is that we're really a multidisciplinary art center. So we're, you know, you have, in a sense, a non-collecting museum. You have a film and video studio that produces, supports a lot of independent filmmakers, budding filmmakers, um, and has an extensive film and video program. Then you have a performing arts center also. So all of this under one roof is really one of the things that the WEX did early on. Like now when you look at every contemporary artist, they all do some sort, form or film. But the WEX early on always had the film and video program. And I think that's also something that's really, really important. Excellent. So I'm going to go back to what you said about community. Um, that really sparked my interest when you said you learned that the WEX was engaged with communities that you might not expect. Can you elaborate on that and then also talk about whether or not you see gaps in terms of community engagement and how you plan to address that? So I would say that um, those there's a lot of work that's being done within community centers, within specific communities that are adapted to the needs of the people. So whether the team is working with um, new Americans, uh, where there's a language barrier, those workshops also have people who speak those languages. So that the objective is not so much that we bring these people to the WEX, but that actually we go to them and that we develop programs that are of need or of use to them. Um, there's a whole program of arts and resilience which works with different communities that suffer from different sorts of forms of trauma. And they bring them to the museum, not just to experience the art, but to see themselves in how the work of the artist can resonate with them at their uh, rhythm, at their pace, and not so much so that they say, oh, I saw this work, but how does this work impact my life on a daily basis? Or there's works that is being done with veteran communities, um, whether we're engaging them with uh, dance performances of artists that are interested in a subject matter related to that. So those are all these end, you know, things that are happening at the WEX and things that are happening offsite, bringing K-12 students within the space of the Wexner Center. Um, so I think these are, and again, um, I could not tell you all the areas where they go, but they are seeped and they weave the, the, their program throughout um, the, the region. And I think that that's really important. Uh, do you want to add anything about uh, future plans to continue that engagement or different ideas, especially, I mean, because both of your backgrounds are so fascinating and you have um, a global perspective that would be really interesting to see how you're going to apply to the Columbus art scene. So I just wanted to give you space to talk about any other community engagement efforts. I mean, I think that for me, like education and learning, learning as a lifelong endeavor can be brought in so many areas. And so I think that, of course, I would want them to do more, 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 but at the same time, we already do so much that I think it's, it's better to like grow in certain areas, but also uh, let the program and let the communities, you have to go to communities, but you have to allow them to come to you. And you cannot accept, uh, expect 
that the moment you show up, everybody's gonna go, yes, I was waiting for you, and please, you know, I wanna join you. So there's a lot about building trust and looking at learning and public practice as a long game. And how do we bring more people within our different areas? How do we program in ways that we reach out to communities in a timely fashion and that we build that trust? So I think that that's, that's something that I'm really passionate about and that I was really happy to find already in place. And so I can just be the champion to like expand that and to support these endeavors within our multidisciplinary areas as well as within the university, which is a big place of learning. Thank you so much. And Brooke, I'd love to hear your thoughts too on uh, the museum and community engagement. You know, I feel the same. When I arrived um, in the spring, so four months ago, uh, I arrived just in time for the start of one of our sort of seasonal public programs, and that's the BAM Late Night Thursdays. And I learned a little bit of its history. It started you know, not long after the pandemic. Um, our members and the general public were wanting to come out again in this you know, better weather, gather. We have you know, the benefit of a very beautiful enclosed sculpture garden downtown where people could convene again and really reconnect, um, you know, rekindle friendships and just have a regular opportunity to meet enjoy the collection, stay out late. Um, and so over the last couple of years, we've really worked hard to program those late evenings. They're weekly throughout this spring and summer. Um, and know that, you know, have the public know that we're open, free, and that they can not only see the collection and the exhibitions that are on view, but just spend time at the museum. Um, I think I've always felt in this city and in others that museums should be communal spaces, they're conveners, everyone should feel like you know, some aspect of the museum is like an extension of their living room or their den or their family room. They should feel warm and, you know, that it's just an easy place for them to, to enter and to engage. And so I think our Late Night Thursdays has really done that throughout the summer. But, you know, also the exhibition program, it's not just public programming. The exhibition program is already, you know, pretty forward looking. We're opening an exhibition this week that um, really features for the first time, artists from the continent exclusively. So we're looking at artists who are of Ghanaian descent and who are also working in Accra. Um, Accra is a sister city of Columbus, has been since 2015, and was the first sister city on the African continent. And so I think for us, it's, it's an opportunity for the exhibition program to reflect one of the largest immigrant communities here in Columbus and in Central Ohio. And it's an immediate opportunity for me to say, you know, this is important. We want to think about all communities in Columbus, ensure that our program reflects, you know, every aspect of our community and that there is over time a reason to sort of follow what we're doing and to see yourself and your history, whether it's your personal history, that of your neighbor, that of a classmate or a schoolmate, um, reflected in the museum. I think it's essential for us to just continually mine uh, new supporters, new members, new audiences, because it's, it's such an important part of what we do to activate the space. Excellent. Uh, Gaetana, I really liked what you said about building trust, and that's, it's not just about building trust with the community, but also with local artists. So I wanted to get both of your opinions on this. Uh, Gaetana, you can start. Um, what is your perspective on how the WEX has engaged with local artists, both in um, partnering with them, showcasing their work, and how you'd like to continue doing that moving forward? So I, I would say that um, the, the institution has shown some important local artists. Uh, I would say also that in the way we invite them to work with us, feature them, whether it's in exhibitions, in talks, in uh, collaborations, that's an area that the WEX does it. Of course, we need to do more, this, because this, um, to my great surprise, there's so many artists of different genre, different interests embedded within the Columbus area. And so how can we be a place that establishes links with the artistic community, how do we support them? How do we support their professional development? Whether it is by doing portfolio nights where people could come in and show their portfolios and kind of meet curators and specialists who could speak to them about their projects. How do we do more master classes when we have um, artists coming to exhibit or guest curators coming? How could we be of service to artists outside of just providing them exhibitions because there's only 
365 days in the year. There's only so many, much exhibition space. So we could never support all the artists just by an exhibition. But how can we be a real thoughtful resource for uh, up and coming artists, mid career artists, established artists, senior artists. And one of the things that I, I'm really excited about is also finding all these artists who might have been raised in Columbus, have moved away from Columbus, but still have a link with this place. And how do we tell that history that maybe was never told before? So looking at projects like this, and we're, we're we can say this, right? The Minx Yes, Bank? go ahead, yes. please. <laughs> This is why you come, so you get the inside <laughs> intel. So um, there's a project that we will be sharing between the, the, the WEX and CMA and also uh, Kenyon College around the artist, the photographer, Ming Smith, who has a very strong link with uh, Columbus, was raised here. And um, so we're in fall 2024, uh, the Wex will have an exhibition of a, a series of her photograph and she'll be creating new works because we commission new works. And then she'll also be presenting a series of works, a major series at the CMA. Those shows will be happening simultaneously within the same season. We wanna do a series of talks. We also wanna bring, um, every cities have like a gallery weekend or things like that. And we're all thinking, how can we bring the world to Columbus to show them that is a vibrant, you know, arts community. And then by having the two of us together with Kenyon, uh, working on one artist that has links with Columbus, that's how, you know, we plan to tell the history of Columbus, Columbus arts practice, and maybe an artist that many who, who had a show at MoMA, who has a show that just closed in uh, Houston, who had a show in Denver, and maybe many people in Columbus might not even know that Ming Smith has a deep, deep rooted relationship with uh, Columbus. So this is a way to also give back and so that the artists that live in Columbus can see us thinking about, you know, a, she's a senior artist, but you should see how it's touching for her, and it was important for her when she told us that she would have a substantial show at the CMA and that she could be at the WEX working with the dance faculty to do a new work. So this is, again, a way of giving back to artists and supporting artists. Her story is, is quite interesting, and um, for decades she made work consistently through the 70s, 80s, and 90s with some recognition, but not a lot, and in the last 10 years or so has had a lot of recognition by institutions, by collectors, there's been quite a lot of publications and scholarship. And so I think for an artist who's that, that established to get that recognition in the city they grew up in, to be able to come home to an institution that she remembers going to as a child, going to with her parents, going with her grandparents, um, and to be able to show in that city is really profound. Uh, as Gaetan mentioned, we also have the opportunity to show artists who are more emerging in mid-career um, this spring, actually a couple months before Ming Smith, we'll do a solo show of Robin Williams, who's a painter who grew up here in Columbus. She went, grew up in Worthington. Uh, she's now based in New York and has a very substantial career and has shown all over the world. Um, and we have the distinction of doing her first institutional show, her first institutional solo show, a monographic publication. Um, and I think for artists who grew up here, it's really a wonderful opportunity to get that recognition at home. You know, people may not be aware that she had this life here and that she's you know, gone off into the world and really had a nice career. And so to be able to bring her back and sort of reintroduce somebody to the city they grew up in is a very special thing. Um, in addition to exhibitions, we also you know, have long had a history of collecting artists from Columbus or associated with Columbus uh, in the collection. I can't not mention our George Bellows collection. If I didn't, it would be a crime. Um, so we have you know, a wonderful collection that you know, goes back hundreds of years, and uh, that's always been an emphasis and will continue to be, um, you know, to look historically, but also to think about artists who have come from here, who have gone off to art school and made their life elsewhere or continue to make work here. Um, we're constantly tracking those artists, doing studio visits, and really looking at their work to see what might fit um, in the collection and where, where we might tell a story around their practice. 
Great, those sound like really interesting projects coming up. Uh, I do want to continue to talk a little bit more about local artists, especially black artists and artists of color. And it's, it's probably no surprise to you this happens all over the country, but a lot of local black artists have felt, have divested from arts institutions in Columbus for a number of reasons. So I'd just love to get your perspective on how you navigate that, how you try to build those relationships um, a little bit more. Well, you know, again, building trust, extending a hand, opening the door, going to meet people where they are for no reason but just showing up. You know, um, I've gone to certain galleries and they're like, hmm, you're here. And I'm like, yeah, nice to meet you, you know. Uh, to me, that's really important. Um, you know, um, engaging in true conversation, understanding what is their expectation, what do they what do they ask of us as an institution to do better and not just play pay lip service but take action and and be part of the conversation it's never speaking to them as like you know or or um just being performative but what is what are their long term needs and how could we be supportive of that and and then once you have an honest conversation, then you figure out what is it that we can do now? What could we plan for the future? What kind of you know, mentorship or support? Or some of them might say, we're really not interested in being in your space. Then it's my job to go to their space and to be part of that community. So it's really, it's, it's writing that story together and not thinking that the institution is the only space where these artists want to be part because if you go for years and years of being excluded it might take you a little time before you you come in but I think also making sure that when we bring other artists of color from uh, around the world or curators that we make sure that we also introduce them to the community and that they have time with the community that the community can talk to them or engage with them break bread together, exchange. And so then after, you know, over time, you build relationships with people. But again, it's a long game. It's not an immediate uh, solution. And it's also understanding what was the story before, how can we uh, change that narrative or continue to work together. Brooke, I'd love to hear your perspective on this as well. You know, it's, um, it's an interesting question, one I've been thinking about lately. I've just landed really, really in Columbus, so I'm still trying to understand what the relationship of the museum has been to artists of color. Uh, and it's a question I've asked myself, and I know many of you have probably heard that next week we'll convene around the big table, an initiative um, supported by the Columbus Foundation, and that's exactly the question I'm asking around the table. So I've invited creatives and makers from different fields, visual arts, performing arts, and material culture from Columbus to join me at the museum in this very conversation to really get a sense of how the museum has functioned for them over the years. And I, you know, to hear directly from them. You know, I've, I've read certainly a little bit, but to hear directly from them what their relationship has been like to the museum, um, what has been missing, and like Gaetan said, you know, what we could do differently. Um, so I thought, yeah, I really need to hear it directly myself, and so I'm hoping that that conversation will be really fruitful. That said, you know, like I mentioned, the exhibition program will continue to reflect more and more artists of color that I think will be important to audiences here in Columbus and that will resonate with the community here. Um, we always, when we work with living artists, invite them in to give talks, um, as I think it's important for artists who are living here to you know, hear from their peers globally. You know, we have artists who are coming in for the Accra show who will speak as part of the exhibition. They'll speak in conversation with writers and other folks who are in their space, you know, if they're literary critics or photo critics, um, so that there can be this dialogue between the creatives who are living here and those that we're bringing into the exhibition space and really kind of create some rich interaction. And I hope that's something that the museum can uniquely contribute for years to come and that you know will provide tremendous value to the art community here. And if we haven't had those communities historically, that we can continue to build those relationships um, through our programming. Thank you for answering that. Okay, um, so, 
in a moment, we are going to go to questions from the audience, both in person. If you have a question here, um, go ahead and make your way uh, over to the mic in the back. And then those of you who are watching on the live stream, please place your questions in the chat. Um, so before we go to that segment, I will ask one last question. This flew by. I have a whole sack here. I knew I was not going to get through this. So I'll just ask this. Um, you know, if you could just think about one thing that you hope to change at each of your institutions, I'd love to know what that would be. I mean, we hope you have long tenures here, but if you look back, what's one thing you really, really want to accomplish? Well, I don't know about change, but certainly I have the opportunity to define. So I landed at the really wonderful time at the museum where we're just a few years out from completing a major expansion. The museum already had beautiful architecture and now, as of 2016, a really wonderful expanded space to present works of art, to present exhibitions, to do programming. A beautiful facility that was very purposefully built for programming. Um, Something that I'm looking forward to over the next two years is to build up the team that will program that space. You know, along with my predecessor, we had a lot of retirements in our curatorial department. So as a new leader, it's really a wonderful opportunity to be able to sort of think very big around, you know, who will be the curators, who will be the voice of our programming and of our collection over the years to come. And so that's something I'm really looking forward to, um, recruiting a great new chief curator to come and help us define our program, curator of contemporary art, a curator of photography. And we have all of these opportunities here at the museum because we have such a rich and deep collection. Um, and it's, it's a great thing as a new leader to be able to bring a team together and bring them into conversation with the staff that has been propelling the museum for so many years. You know, we're very fortunate that many of the CMA staff have long tenures at the institution um, and a lot of institutional history and knowledge to bring into conversation with new leadership. So for me, that's a tremendous opportunity. It's, it's really like a gift to be able to like build my own team. Thank you so much. And Gaetan? So um, I want, you know, what I, what I attracted me to the WEX was really the multidisciplinarity nature of the institution and this ability to commission works of art. I really hope, but the, for all artists, what they need is an audience to look at their work, to engage with their work. So I really hope, that's my, my, my dream and aspiration. I'm all about community and creating, you know, um, a sense of belonging and that people see themselves in the WEX um, and also see themselves in the WEX whether they come to the WEX or they don't come to the WEX. So that it's, it's like this is a place that's for you that has greater access, that you can come and see the work we do, you can engage with it because artists, um, whichever field they are, if there's an empty room, this is not why artists show their work. You know, a performance, the, the musician or the dancer also f gets fed by the bodies that are in the space. So if there's one thing that I would really like to achieve is to create a greater sense of audiences within uh, the space of the, the, of the WEX and uh, purposeful engagement uh, from people of all generation and that people feel that, you know, the WEX is for them. Uh, as much as it is a place for artists, but it's really for communities to gather together. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to read my script here. It's CMC's longstanding tradition to take audience questions. Uh, Lainey with CMC is curating questions from our live stream audience. For those of you with us in person, please join Lainey at the microphone. Out of respect for others, please keep your questions brief and to the point so we can get to as many as possible. Please also keep in mind that questions end with the question mark. <laughs> Lainey, uh, what is our first question? Thank you, Erica. Um, we are being asked, who are your favorite artists and why? You have to answer that. I can't answer that. I, I can never choose. No, I, I never choose. I never say it, because there's many artists. Yeah. And ev no, no, but listen, there's, there's, there's artists that there's so many artists that I, that, uh, whose work I admire, and it would be unfair to select one. I mean, the world is filled with yeah. thousands and thousands of artists, and there's artists 
that I, you know, depending on what you want to show and why, there's certain artists you're going to choose for a certain type of exhibition. So it's not just I like or I don't like. There is, there is a science to this madness, you know? You choose artists for a purpose and, and, um, and you know, there's artists that I liked when I was really young and then you, there's certain works that grow onto you as you grow in your life. So I cannot answer that question. Yeah. Are you just gonna skip? You're just I mean, it's virtually, like, it's virtually impossible, yeah, to select just one. Good question, though. <laughs> just know that I always deflect it when asked. I never, I never answer that. Hi, I'm confident that uh, if anybody can figure out how to put a question mark on a public service announcement, it would be a room full of artists. So, uh, Andy Keeler, I'm a Dublin City Council member, and I just wanted to make everyone aware that the city is hoping to build a cultural arts center within the next five or six years. Uh, we have an Abbey Theater that seats about 200. We have the Dublin Arts Council. Neither is big enough. So we're um, just trying to make connections with the art community and folks that are passionate about the arts to get this thing off the ground. Thank you. Question mark. Well, know that everyone is welcome always at CMA until that gets done. <laughs> and we're free on Sundays. And we're free all the time. You guys are just shooting right through this. <laughs> okay, uh, the next question is, uh, many Columbus developers seem very interested in having art in public places, incorporating them into their developments. Um, are there ways that your institutions might encourage more of this? Um, one of the, I mean, I love to work with uh, developers on such uh, projects. I've done this in my past life. Um, but um, one of the things that I'd like to bring at the WEX is really to use the plaza in front of the Wexner Center to every year have uh, a work of public art placed there for about 10 to 11 months so um, and invite different artists to create these works. And um, one of my secret w wish is to also partner with different organization in the city um, in order for there to be a work at the WEX and a work off site of the WEX so that it's the WEX at the WEX and the WEX outside of the WEX. And public art is a great way to uh, engage people with, uh, with sculpture with, and without having to push them to cross the threshold of the institution. That can be for many people very scary. So putting art in the public space is something that I'm, I'm a big, a huge fan of. So happy to work with uh, local developers in uh, being a thought partner uh, about, you know, artists, the many artists that I love that could, could fit <laughs> within their projects. So there's a lot of those. <laughs> the same, I'm, I'm completely intrigued and encouraged by all of the public art conversations that are happening around Columbus. Um, when I landed in May, it was just uh, prior to the inauguration and sort of unveiling, so to speak, of Janet Eckelman at Gay and High. And it's such a fantastic project and one that I'm keen to see kind of encouraging more conversation around public art in the city. Um, we are also very fortunate at the museum that that work has been gifted to the collection. So we will continue to be stewards of it for years to come. Um, I'm, I know people are very curious about its process. It will come down every year and go in the winter and go back up in the spring. Um, and I think just understanding what it takes to steward a work of art um, is a kind of fascinating process for the public. And as we continue to commission more and more work, I know we're doing a lot of studies and research into that here in town. Um, I think these are the kinds of conversations that are really rich to have with the community because with works like this, it's really everyone's responsibility to care for them, to look after them, and also to think about you know, what works best in this community, what, what works of art create dynamic conversations um, and are inspiring and enriching in what places. So, I, I was totally excited by the public art conversations that were going on when I landed in the spring, and that continue um, to go on. I am really excited about it. 
Thank you, everyone, uh, for the conversation. My name is Taisha Radford Shorts. I am a writer here in Columbus. Um, and speaking of public art, I'm sure you know there's lots of conversations about um, what is Columbus's identity. Um, I think one thing that gets missing is in that is uh, Columbus institutions and how they contribute to the identity of the city. Um, and so as new uh, Columbus residents, I'm wondering how you would describe uh, the identity of your respective institutions to someone who may not be engaged or who has never visited. So how would you describe the identity or the culture of CMA and the WEX to someone who's never been and perhaps you would like to persuade to come visit? Um, we've been thinking around the, the table, the team at the WEX about what is our identity and we actually did a survey and a visioning exercise. So we're between Vanguard and Rebel. So Rebel in the sense of, you know, not looking at the status quo, but always pushing the envelope, always expanding, um, showing works of art that are conscious of the time in which we live, that are uh, answering questions of social justice, um, that are, you know, fingers on the pulse of the, the key issues that resonate with many people within the world in which we live in. And the beauty of this for us is because we, we work with living artists and living artists are reacting to the world around them. So I would say that that's a big element. I would say that when you come to the WEX, you're always going to be um, engage with a subject matter. Um, sometimes, you, you know, I feel, but it's, it's warranted. We need to think about the present. The present is urgent. The present requires from all of us to be thoughtful, to be um, compassionate, but I also want us to have joy at the same time. So we talk about, about issues. Uh, we present, you know, beautiful lyrical art, um, but at the same time, um, you know, we want to be vibrant. And the rebellious part is that you're always pushing against the grain and uh, taking the leadership from the artists with whom we work to present what's the most urgent questions that affect all of us all the time. So that's how I would uh, describe the WEX. I mean, I hope I'm giving it, that's, that's my vision of the WEX and the one that I think I share with all my colleagues at the WEX, this notion of wanting to be this bridge between the work of artists and communities. That's a lot. <laughs> um, this is such an interesting question because I think that we are in a really dynamic moment of transformation and change at CMA. Um, I think it has always been Columbus's museum, and that's clear from its leadership, by the way it's grown over the years. Um, but I think when you think specifically about our program, that's something that we are really poised right now to sort of redefine. Um, when I think about the year ahead for us, you know, it, it's something that we can all work to redefine in the, in the coming months and years. And that's a really exciting prospect. It's a moment of definition and uh, self-realization in a new way. Uh, and that's really exciting for me and I hope for our whole team, um, especially as that team grows and evolves. Um, it will always be an institution that exists in the public trust. You know, the collection is for this community and that will never change. But I think, you know, as a brand, that's something that, you know, we are embarking on redefining as we speak. One thing I, I wanted to add that I always keep forgetting is that, and I don't know if everybody knows here, but you know, um, I've lived in Paris. I have friends all over the world and they know the WEX. They follow what the WEX has been doing for years and years. And so whether I'm in Berlin or Sao Paulo, they know the WEX. So that, I'm not sure everybody understands what that means in terms of how the WEX has supported the careers of artists that they have shown and how the, the whether it's in film, whether it is in performing arts, whether it is in visual arts, which is a big part of it also, the, you know, the number of artists that I can, that I meet and that either dream of showing at the WEX or have 
have had a show at the Wax and their ability to do a residency and produce new works has been something that has brought them to the next level. And we could say from people doing films and then winning a Academy Awards to artists having a show and then la later, later on becoming, you know, one of those really well-established artists who then exhibit at the Venice Biennale. So that's, that's what the WEX has brought in and is also at the same time. And not knowing if everybody understands the importance of the role of that institution um, you know, on the world stage, and maybe our job is to tell that story in a better way and to connect it with the people of this community. Mm -hmm. So online um, uh, viewers, Peter McRae and Nan Nanny, both asked questions related to this. Innovation is a key in the arts world. Can you share any exciting technological or digital initiatives that you are exploring to enhance the visitor experience or beyond the physical walls of your institutions? Nan asked about um, online uh, programs, and Peter asked about your embrace of AI. Ooh. Well, short answer, not enough yet. However, we are seeking grant funding to do all of the above. <laughs> <laughs> That's as candid as it gets. Um, yeah, on the verge of all of these things. Yeah. I think, you know, during the pandemic when all museums were closed to the public. Um, every institution, both of ours included, were pushed to do quite a lot of digital programming and programming online and connecting with members and all of our stakeholders through kind of virtual um, events. We've continued to you know, record all of our programming and make it available on all of our social channels because we don't want to lose digital audiences. I know that was a theme we heard earlier. So we continue to do all of that work. But in terms of really kind of like pushing the envelope in, ter in terms of technology, I think those are all things that we're researching right now and seeking support for um, going into the future. But you know, they're all topics that are top of mind. Um, right now, we're featuring an artist in an exhibition at our space in the short north at, at the Pizzuti whose um, medium is computational craft. She collapses in her work um, indigenous weaving and AI and machine learning. And so, you know, part of what fascinated us about her work, and this is a show we did in collaboration with colleagues of ours at OSU and the History of Art Department, um, was the way in which she combined tradition and the future. Um, and we were really interested in that practice. So it's on our minds, and it's something that we are definitely thinking about uh, how we incorporate that into our public programming and into our learning programs over over the long term. I mean, I don't have much to add uh, except the fact that we also continue to record, to um, stream live, because you know many communities living with disabilities, you know, finally f uh, saw themselves, you know, um, connected to institution. And um, you know, once everybody is back to normal, whatever that normal is, we should not stop doing that work. Uh, it requires an investment of time and resources, but it is a worthwhile investment to continue. Yeah. And when it comes to AI, I really still don't understand what it's all about. So I think I'm going to stay a lodite and just like show artworks. And 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 then the last thing I would say is that. You know, the virtual is really important, but I also think that being in front of a work of art, to me, is still where the emotion happens, because your body, you feeling, um, when you see a concert and you, you listen to the person singing, there's something different than watching it on a screen. And I'm not dismissing the need to, to, uh, to stream things, because that, uh, um, solves problems for many people who don't have time, who can't move, f so many different reasons. But there is still, for me, the joy of being in front of a work of art and engaging fully um, body and soul <laughs> with the work of art in front of us. I think technology is of use if it can also, you know, bring people to do the action that we want of them, which is either buy a ticket or drive, park, sit in front of the work of art to engage with the work of the artist. 
Well, Doug is giving me the wrap-up signal. He told me to blame him. (laughs) This has been such a great conversation, uh, but I will turn it back over to Deb for closing remarks. Thank you, Erica. Thank you, Erica. Thank you, Erica. Those were great questions. Oh, thank you. Very good (laughs) questions. Uh, Well, thank you all very much. I hope that you learned something new today, that you're inspired to maybe visit one of these institutions or both in the near future. Uh, and that you're excited about this new collaboration that they shared with us today. I know I am, and I will look forward to that. Thanks so much to our sponsors for today's forum, the Greater Columbus Arts Council, Benefactor Group, and Cover My Meds. And thank you again to the Ellis, this beautiful venue. We also want to thank our virtual seat patrons and the Center for Human Kindness at the Columbus Foundation and the Columbus Dispatch for presenting today's live stream and a very special appreciation for our guests today, Brooke Minto, Gaetan Verna, and our host, Erica Thompson. Please make plans now to attend next week's luncheon forum, Gen Z Girls Lead the Way, right here at the Alice. That's right, we're back to normal, 11.30 next Wednesday. Uh, starting next week. We hope we see you there. And now, please enjoy some refreshments, mingle. We're here until 6. Have a great evening. Thanks for being here.